Hello and welcome back to SGTV. We have a very special guest today, the one and only Mr. Tim Shaw. Thank God there's only one. <laughs> Um, I heard you was in the area and wanted to pop in. Well, uh, yeah, that's right. I mean, we film um, Car SOS just down the road here in Oldbury. That's where the okay. workshop is. And uh, I had a cancellation today. And I was like, I want to go and see my friends at Skullmore. I can't do days with nothing planned in, with nothing technical planned. So I wanted to come up here to see what new gear you've got knocking around. Okay. So that explains how I turned up. Okay, no, it's good to see you. It's good <laughs> to have impressed. you down here. Well, I walked into reception and I was I had a word with the receptionist. I said, what's new? What's new? And she showed me some, some new leaflets and stuff. And you've got some pretty... Pretty cool stuff out here, but uh, I think um, I think we're going to dig some stuff out later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, what is it? Um, I mean, you mentioned about building a relationship with us. I mean, we've mm. been dealing with you for a while now. But what is it that initially attracted you to Skullmore well, and Skullmore products? I'm a massive fan of uh, British companies. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm a big fan of, you know, I, I like to be able to get hold of something and pick something. I mean, look, I'm always fiddling with things. I'm always like, mm, you know, even when I'm like fuzz is always when I'm driving around in the car for car SOS, I've always got something else going on. You know, I'm pleased that I put my phone out of the way when I'm driving, so I don't want to get, you know, six points for using my phone. But I've always just got something in my hand and I'm playing with it, something tangible to hold. And the thing I like about Skullmore is that every time I come here, there's something new to look at. And I feel that, I mean, uh, what people don't know about me is that I do a whole lot of construction. So I think if you asked Fuzz, he would say that Tim splits his time between, whereas most people go family 50%, you know, the 20% holidays, this and the other. I, I'm just bizarrely obsessed with um, construction, whether it be cars or whether it be buildings. Yeah. And I do a lot of buildings, so I would say that 50% of my time in existence is making stuff. Anything I can get stuck into and have a crack at. Okay. So, and one big of, amounts. You know. One of the things I've heard you working on at the moment, you, you're renovating studios for, yeah. for your own company. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, um, I, I've, I've built, built a house uh, pretty much from scratch. We started off with um, a house that we thought wasn't as bad as it was, but we did that classic thing of pulling up the carpet and then seeing Joyce that had been rotten for Find everything that's gone uh, wrong. Absolutely, Every yeah. cowboy builder's yep. job you can possibly yep. think of. The house is 200 None years old. None of it was old. me. No, exactly, yeah. <laughs> no one admits to any of it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the house was falling to pieces. Literally, it was four walls. So it was an old 200-year-old house and I decided to completely redo it myself. You know, whatever, I can fix all the problems. The building was literally falling down. You know, I had to um, stitch weld. I think, I think that's the automotive term, but basically <coughs> you grind out through the, through the stone and then you insert you stainless put steel plates threat. to Absolutely. support. Yeah. yeah, well you put stainless steel bar in there, then you resin them in and you have to go, it's like basically repairing a cut in skin. You know, you sew it up, but you sew it up with... Uh, with well, at least you know you've put, well, not only your own mm. mark on it, you know you, you've got a good job. Oh, yeah, you've done absolutely. a good job on it. Oh, I put all the floors in. Uh, I mean, it, it was just four walls, nothing else. You know, I've done, the deal that I did with my missus was we're bringing nobody in. Nobody's coming and we're going to learn it. I mean, we have this thing called YouTube. Yeah. So if somebody <laughs> else can do it, I'll have a crack. And I may not be as quick, you know, when it, when it comes to tiling or grouting or flooring or underfloor heating or whatever, any of that stud walling or wiring, which is something I've always done. Um, I may not be as quick, but I'll have a crack at it. Yeah. And that's what life's for, to learn. So uh, Get a few injuries on the way yeah, as well. Oh, hell yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've done a, done quite a few, few hits to the head lately. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. 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 I think I've got, look, we've got one here where I'm still, you know, scars down here from various things. But um, so yeah, that was the house. And then it's one of those where that was sort of, after five years, it was nearing completion. So then we've taken on a workshop um, up in Stockport. Uh, my company's bought this, this workshop and we're doing it up as a studio. Okay. As a studio for future projects, future television projects. And I've got uh, quite a few people that want to film shows there, which is yeah. exciting. I understand you're using a lot of Skullmore lights, yeah, sockets. Yeah. Any in particular that you're using? Well, that... yeah. I mean, it, I mean, just looking, I was just looking at this just now and I noticed that, <laughs> that this, this is an IP65 rated um, spot isn't it but you've actually got three switches on it so you've got a warm cold and i don't know what the d stands for but it's, it's color temperature isn't it yeah so color, it goes yeah, between, color temperature adjustments yeah, one, yeah which is another really annoyingly good idea i mean uh, forgive my ignorance for not knowing this but back in the day when i started fitting these they were they, they were gu 10s and they were 240 volt halogen bulbs and they were dead hot and it was 90 percent inefficient yeah. it was all heat you walk in a room and start melting oh yeah absolutely yeah but i've got this thing where i've i've bought different color temperature lights by mistake and you turn the lights on, you go, oh, I've got a yellow one and two white ones. It looks terrible. Rip it out, do it again. In terms of studio stuff, what I'm doing is, television is one of those things where the face of television uh, is changing all the time. I and mean, you've got panel lights in here and a few lights around us. And you've got some sound deadening stuff on the wall for absorbing the sound so you don't get an echo in here, which, which makes sense. A lot more people are now um, creating their own television and creating their own studios. Yeah, so it's forever to, evolving. Yeah, it? absolutely. Yeah. 
So what I'm doing is I, I've got this space in Stockport and I just thought I'll take the knowledge that I've got from making television, which is now, you know, 15 years of experience. And I'm sure there are people out there with much better knowledge than me now of stuff. But I thought what, what I'll do is I'll create an environment where there's something in television called depth of field. I mean, basically what you want to do when you film anyone is have them as, not as close to the camera. You want to have as much distance in the back. Like if you've got a head against a wall, there isn't any sort of, we get used to a professional sort of Photoshop of things being blurred in the background. And that's the sign of a de decent lens, frankly, you know, a, a, something that's well shot. So like in TV terms, they generally want to have a, you know, that's why when you watch the news, you get people in the back going, Whoa, waving in the distance because it looks nice to have a disappearing sort of, you know, in sort of infinity shot, you know, behind people. So what I wanted to do is create a studio where that, that is possible, where if you are filming, you can still see it in the distance. A lot of that is created by lighting. So when you watch television now, you'll notice that if you're watching this morning or whatever it is, you'll see two presenters there and quite away in the distance, they'll have lit something with a blue light or a green light or something just to pick out a little bit of blurry sort of a bit of detail in the background. What, I, what I'm doing up there is using all the Skullmore gear to basically create banks of light. So you could film you and I here having a chat about something, but then 30 meters behind us, there's just something lit up on a bank of light. So it's, it very clearly gives to a viewer the, the, the sort of um, yeah. depth of field, so there is something you know quite a, quite a way away. I've never noticed that before, but I know mm. next time I watch something like that, I'm going to be like, ah. oh yeah. I mean, it's a real it's a real art, but it's something that like um, I I, I kind of get it. And I kind of don't. Over time of just watching DOPs, director of photography, is the people who come in and set a uh, dress a set. You see them putting something in the distance. You go, why is that? That looks rubbish when I'm looking at it with my eyes. But then when you watch a camera screen, you'll go, actually, no, it doesn't. It looks great. So, the, I mean, the electrician who's doing our unit is going to have a nightmare because I'm having rings of your panel LED lights and these are going to be independently lit so you could go, right, let's set it, mm, how does that look? Oh no, stick the one on further back, stick one on further, turn that one off and stick another one on further back to get the right feeling. And it's amazing how if you, for me, I see it as a science, I see it as something that, you know, if you can get it right, then have a crack at it. So I want to have it so it's, you know, a whole load of switches. And I want reliable switches that work, so that was one of the other things with experience of, of fitting some of the click switches, they're, they're still going five years on and we hammer them every day. Um, it's good gear, we've never had a single failing with any Skullmore products once. And uh, to me it's about the quality of the build. So it works for us and we're using it to create an interesting lighting environment that anybody else that would come in and go, why the hell have you created this absolute you know, labyrinth of wires? But um, for us, if you're a camera person or a studio director, you'll come in and go, no, 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 I get it. It works for us. It looks good on camera. Tim, I've got to say, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Yeah. Um, as I said, we're going to be doing a lot more, you know, at your studio here. Uh, so everyone out there, please do like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you again next time.